I'm going to start working my way through the various issues of this 928. If you haven't seen the other videos, I bought an 86 Porsche 928 with a manual that also had a turbo kit on it. It also has years of neglect and improper repairs. I don't even know if I'd call it a repair. Uh, there's lots of things to sort on this car. I've been kind of working my way through them. I've sorted the easiest ones first. Uh, I've had to peel the plenums off. We're going to replace the injectors, a bunch of stuff I'm going to show you. Uh, and I found a whole bunch more problems. The more I work on it, the more things I find. But hey, it's a 30 some odd year old German car and other people have worked on it. So I kind of expected it. Where I left off in the last video, I talked about how I got a hold of the guy that used to own this car and also developed this turbo kit. He told me that this car is supposed to have 30 pound injectors and a six to one FMU. We also discovered that this has a fuel leak in the last video. So I decided to replace the FMU because that was the source of the fuel leak. And I bought a used Vortec uh, 12 to one and I ended up buying a recalibration kit for it. It was much cheaper than buying a new one. And I, I mean, let's face it, an FMU is a Band-Aid and it's likely not gonna stay on this car, but I wanna get some of the other kinks worked out before I start trying to tune this thing. I just wanna get it to where I can run and drive it. I also discovered some horrific crankcase vent and evaporative mixing things. It's like the, it's just, it's bad. I got no other words for it, it's bad. Whoever did that, bad. Uh, and uh, I decided I'm also relocating the FMU to this side since uh, it makes more sense to, to get it over here, uh, the, all the lines will reach and there's not really as much room over there since I, in the last video, I mounted the intake air temp sensor properly in the charge piping. It kind of takes up the space where the FMU used to go. Time to show you some more Mickey Mousery that I found. Here is the spark plug wire that's on the driver's side, third cylinder back. And that is electrical tape. Why, you may say, why would there ever be electrical tape on a spark plug wire? These all have boots on them, like right here. Where did the, oh, it's right here. Because instead of, I don't know, using a hose or a proper method of blocking off this, this uh, crankcase ventilation tube, they decided to steal a boot off the plug wires and then, oh, they put a bolt in it. Fixed it, not fixed, fixed. So we have to actually fix that. We're gonna make that right. Also, here is the oil return from the turbo kit. And this hose is rubber, probably not rated for oil, and it's also cracked. So we're gonna get that fixed too. And uh, the plugs look good. I pulled a couple plugs out. They all look good, not white, not covered in oil. So those are gonna stay. And uh, we're gonna get the injector swapped over. Yeah, no shortage of work. Well, I've made a little bit of progress here. This is the new, and I'm still not happy with it. This is the oil return from the turbo. It originally went to this location. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not really happy with the way this came out, but I kind of made do with what I had available to me. Uh, that, this is a quick trip to the hardware store, but this is what was there before. And I'll show you why I replaced it, but um, I'm, I'm not really fond of this going to the valve cover. If I'm being completely honest, I wish it went to the pan, uh, which so that might be something I change at a later date. So this was the oil return that I took off. It has this PEX fitting, which I, I admit I used more PEX fittings to go back together, but it also had this random hose off of something else. And let me show you why I replaced this, because this was in, this was like a pending disaster. Uh, this is just all dry and hard. It's likely not meant to have oil go through it, but that was what was there. And had I not paid attention to that, this thing probably would have evacuated the oil and all over the driver's side of the car it would have been a very bad day for me. I've also swapped the injectors out. It now has those 30 pound injectors which have been cleaned. So those are installed. My FMU is mounted securely, uh, tucked between the charge pipe and the passenger side plenum. This is just hanging in there loose. I don't have this clamped down, but I need to get the driver's side together. Um, and I gotta work on some crankcase ventilation. As you can see, I put a catch can here that's tied to the driver's side valve cover. It didn't have, it had a cap there before. So I think this is better, I, I'm, I'm hoping. I think the uh, crankcase vent is gonna be a lot of trial and error, but uh, gotta start somewhere. I've got the crankcase ventilation system, the first iteration of it kind of done. Uh, this comes from the driver side valve cover and this gets vented to atmosphere. I'll probably do something a little different and run this all the way to uh, pre-turbo. So at least it's drawing that in or maybe I'll just leave it vented, I'm not sure. Uh, I did notice that the crankcase ventilation that was already in place 
which comes from the under the center of the engine actually just vents the atmosphere underneath uh, the like passenger rear rear wheel. I'm not quite sure if that's the way the kit was designed, but um, I still have to cap this hose here. That I, I removed all the evaporative stuff. Uh, it was only half hooked up. Half of it wasn't even here, so I figured I'd, I'd finish it off. I also noticed that these two vacuum lines, this one's just capped right now. I gotta get this whole thing taken apart just because these are not the same vacuum source and I put them together as if they were and it created an internal vacuum leak, which I have since solved. Another thing I noticed when I had the plenums off is that this, is, this is which is attached to, this tube which is attached to the throttle body, they're supposed to be mounts, I guess rubber mounts in the valley and they're broken. So this moves around and that also adjusts the tension on the throttle linkage. And that creates a massive problem when I first put it together, it idled at 2000 RPM and we can't have that. So I played around with it and played around with it and I got it to where it was before, but it's still not right. And to replace that, I got to peel the plums back off and the intake manifolds. And then I will be able to replace that. I'm gonna do, I will probably do a top end service at that time. I've done the injectors. Those went in without a hitch. There were no issues there. I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. I, obviously, this is a whole bunch of temporary stuff. I got to cap that. I'm not still. sure if I touched base on this before, but this has no fan belt on it. Someone deleted the secondary air injection pump. Well, it's still there, but I, and I got to get that out of there, but I have to get a belt on here before I can drive this thing. I definitely don't want to overheat this engine. As with many of the rubber components on this car that are not original and some that are, the rubber's pretty dry. It's starting to come apart and split. So I think I'm going to buy a vacuum line kit for this car when, and that'll be a good time to do it with the intake off and fixing everything else. But it starts and runs pretty good. Makes good vacuum. Something that has totally blown me away, uh, the guy I bought the car from actually called me uh, probably a few weeks ago and said, hey, I found some more parts for that car when I was cleaning out my garage, so I'm gonna, I'd like to drop it off at your house. So he did, and in this bin of parts and stuff, I got the entire diagram for the turbo kit, which is pretty awesome. I don't think I could get this anywhere else. I've got some printouts from a workshop manual, uh, service history, everything that's been done, which I haven't even really looked. It's got a key code. Car came with some work done in Atlanta. This is pretty, uh, pretty extensive. Wow, even tires. I don't even keep this detailed history on my cars. Uh, so I'm pretty, pretty ex excited about that. I got some secondary air control parts, probably the parts that were pulled from it, some extra hose, I'm not quite sure what that's for, another radio, some Mighty Vac parts, I got the workshop manual, all of them, which this is just awesome to have, transmission, engine, looks like I got all the volumes of that, I got the an extra clock that looks to be bad, which is okay, some seat belts, some speakers, just a bunch of miscellaneous parts, many of which are missing on this car, and a lot of which I'm gonna have to figure out where they go. I don't really have a road map of why things go in a certain place. There's some AN fittings. So this is, uh, that was really nice of the guy, really nice. Again, the guy that I got it from, he didn't do any of this stuff to this car, he just owned it. I think I said from the very beginning that I would try to track down a parts car, and I have. This is a really crappy, really, really crappy 87928 automatic. I know it's a facelift one, but it gives me better brakes, which is four piston Brembo calipers all the way around and a bunch of other parts that I need for mine. But more importantly, this car acts as a roadmap for me to put my interior together. The interior on this is black. 
It's got a lot of good parts that I can use for mine, although not all of it is good. I still have to find door panels and some other stuff. But to have something complete that I can pull apart, I can learn how it comes apart, and have all the right fasteners and clips and hardware, uh, it was totally worth buying a parts car. Plus, I'll have a lot of parts to sell off of this thing, which should make this car essentially free by the time I'm done. I don't even know if this thing's going to run. I don't know if the engine's locked up. It's uh, been sitting for a long time. It's got a lot of miles on it, like 170,000. And, you know, this is a little different design than my uh, engine being the next generation or next iteration. But still, to have all the same hardware, I mean, I've got more Porsche bolts now than I could ever hope for. Apparently, this car was abandoned somewhere and towed and then run through the auction where some idiot in St. Louis, me, bought it. But in the next videos, we'll be taking this thing apart, finding out what's good, what's bad, maybe getting it running. Um, well, we can start with that. We'll also be driving my car, hopefully ironing some more kinks out of it and blowing some tires off and hopefully nothing else. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you on the next update.